Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, and today we are returning to Ultimate General American Revolution. It's been a while since I've played this game, and there have been a lot of changes. And one of those changes is that they've added scenario battles to the campaign map, which is something that I've been asking for for quite some time. Sort of like how the Total War series has, uh, I, I guess you would call it quest missions on their campaign map. Something that I really wanted in this game, especially adding historical battles to uh, just add that little historical vibe to the game. So we're going to try out the new Battle of Concord. I believe it uh, opens up on April 19th, 1775, and then you have seven days to help your allies in the Battle of Concord. And these two little squares here mean that you can bring two regiments to the battle. So we're going to move our forces forward and hopefully the battle will spawn and I can show this new little scenario to you guys. Um, this is all we're going to show off today and there we go. Click on the Battle of Concord and you can see we have 2,258 militia and 118 skirmishers, George Washington and two regiments at our disposal here. The enemy has William Meadows, William Phillips, and 360 infantry and 100 supply there, along with another, that is quite a large amount of forces here. So historical units, campaign units, not sure what the campaign units are, if they're on the battlefield somewhere or if they're just part of the scenario. But another 700 troops with some cannons, 680 troops with some cannons, and then 650 troops with what I believe to be some supplies. So let's dive right on in and show this off. So here we go. You can see that the scenario map is a little bit different than what you're used to. Um, pretty cool. So we're going to add George Washington to... How do we do this? Do we just add him over here? Oh, just double click him. Got it. And then should be able to just double click a unit with him. Click this area here, double click the unit, and it moves over. I was trying to drag and drop, but it's just assign with left click and remove with right click. I guess I should have read the bottom of this. So if you guys remember, this used to be this little tutorial. It really had nothing to do with the game, which was kind of a disappointment. So the British are attempting to advance to Concord and seat the Patriot stash weapons and ammo. And that is this zone here. The stash weapons and ammunition are vital for our cause and must be saved at all cost. We have reports that patriots from all near counties are on the way. We must slow the British down until they arrive. Good luck, General. So the British are coming, or as it was actually said, the regulars are coming. So we're just going to move troops back. In fact, I don't really like these guys that far out, so we're... We're going to bring them all the way back. Would love if we could have placed them somewhere else to start, but that is all right. And then we'll move you guys into here. George Washington up, and when we get some skirmishers, we will have those guys deploy. So we'll just make the British walk across the map. We'll fast forward a little bit. So the old tutorial was you just uh, essentially green tided it with a bunch of militia. It was a very spammy battle. There wasn't much to it. You were obviously designed to win, um, but it was a bunch of farmers with pitchforks, as Lord Cornwallis says in The Patriot, against regular Brits. And it was pretty... Uh, it was an okay starter, but as I said, it really had nothing to do with the core of the game because none of the mechanics of this had anything to do with the rest of the campaign, but now they're adding more scenario battles into the game, this actually makes a lot more sense. Um, however, would like some would like some skirmishers, so I guess I guess we probably won't have any skirmishers, that is that is fine. Probably need those guys to run. I actually have them combine their combine their division. And we'll see how we do over here. Might not go too well. I said division, it's uh, companies, I guess. So we'll have them combine the companies and continue moving on out. All right, in theory, 
We should be well defended behind the barricades. It's not going fantastic. Um, zoom in on wonderful battle. Maybe take a screenshot or something like that. Maybe a thumbnail. Who knows? And here comes some more reinforcements wherever they are. I think these are... Uh, some of them are our troops, actually. This guy here, I believe, is part of our, our starters that we start the campaign with. And then over here, we've got a nice beefy unit that will move up. We'll have these skirmishers move over into the trees over here. And then we'll have these guys sort of group up behind here and find their unit. Uh, so we are getting... It's not looking too great over here. We are definitely getting pummeled. That is a lot of British forces. Um, and really just the objective is to hold out over here. Now, all of this being said, you do need to keep in mind that these are the troops that you have on the campaign battlefield. So um, might behoove you to try and keep as many of them alive as possible. Uh, so I guess I should talk about Ultimate General American Revolution as I haven't played it for a while and it really is what got my channel to the thousand subscriber mark and I need to play it more. Uh, one of the reasons why I stopped playing it, um, besides the fact that I just stopped recording videos altogether, some audio glitches there, was... The game is in early access and it makes it really difficult to to con to record long-term campaigns of this when the devs are pushing out updates all the time. And that's not a knock on the devs or anything. That's just how early access games work. Um, but it became very, very difficult when you're in the middle of a campaign and something was updated and it completely breaks your campaign so that was one of the reasons why we stopped um so moving forward i i don't know if we'll do a large playthrough right away i might just go ahead and try out uh these little different battles there are three in the game right now i think it's chelsea creek and st john's uh, I don't know how far in St. John's is. I don't think it's actually that far. I think it's once the map opens up to... opens up to Canada. So moving these forces up, trying to... These guys are just getting absolutely blasted, which is not good. Those guys will probably run away. We need to replace troops in the middle. And deal with those troops out on the edges. Really need to replace the men in the middle. Now I wonder, are these skirmisher models the new skirmisher models? Not skirmisher models, the militia models. That was one of my complaints with this battle at the beginning, is it had units that weren't represented in the core of the game. They were like the old, old models. And it uh, always, always bugged me, but understandably so. As I said, it's an early access game, so they change how units look, they change models, all of that. And that is perfectly fine and acceptable, and I mean, they should be changing stuff like that anyways. All right, we're going to continue moving troops up. Uh, we really need to move these guys out. I think F is fallback. I need you guys to get into there. I can have you guys run up. Looks like they... Uh, no, condition is still a problem. Uh, There's always been a problem in this battle, too, is you you run your troops up and... Well, uh, they... You know, there we go. I was about to say, you used to be able to left-click draw. Um, they would get to the battlefield and they would be exhausted by the time they made it onto the battlefield. So yeah, um, as, as I was saying, probably a lot of content for Ultimate General American Revolution is going to be uh, looking at the various changes in the game and not necessarily a full playthrough. That doesn't mean we won't do a full playthrough, it just means it's not a priority at the moment 
because it's not something that is easily easy to do. I'm going to run these guys forward. But we we do plan to do one in the future, mostly once the game sort of settles down with the updates and I can kind of time time the updates a little bit better than I currently can. So at this moment I'm trying to replace the frontline troops my my frontline troops with the scenario troops because at the end I don't care about the casualties of the scenario troops but I do care about the casualties of my frontline troops um they they are not easily replaceable whereas the scenario troops they are very much easily replaceable because uh they they only exist for this little battle here. So we're going to move those guys forward. We're going to replace those frontline troops. We're going to have you guys fall back because you are taking a beating. And then let's have you guys... Oh, I, I forgot. There is a halt button in this game. And that's something that we need to be a little bit better with. So let's have you guys move forward over here. Let's have you guys move out over here. Let's have you guys fall back. Let's have you guys fall back, and then you guys move into there, and you guys can move into there, and then you guys will become friends. What is the hotkey for becoming friends? And when I say becoming friends, joining units, you can have your units uh, group up and they become larger, which is very handy when it comes to microing your units. George Washington. Just give us your courageous speeches. That's all we really ask for in this dire situation over here. So let's have you guys shoot over here. Should probably give you guys the hold order. Um, let's actually have you move forward. Let's have you all move forward just a little. Give you guys the hold order. I always forget about the hold order when I come back to this game. It gives you more... I believe it gives you more uh, cover. Hold position offers better defense. Wish it told you exactly how much. First rank will kneel and unit will remain in current formation and facing unless it receives a rare attack or morale becomes critically low. So it's also a good way to have your troops um, not continuously rotate around, which is always, always beneficial. We're just going to chase that unit out over there. That unit is gone gone when the enemy has, I, I guess, flags? I think they're supposed to represent white flags. They will rout off the battlefield. And that means you no longer have to deal with that unit. So let's have these guys roll around this way. Um, this scenario, a lot easier when you get your regulars. Get, get to use your regulars. That, uh, that definitely makes that a lot easier. I say that and this militia is routing. Unfortunate on their part. I won't make any jokes about militia because there are some uh, <laughs> grognards that uh, feel very, very... They have very large opinions of militia during the Revolutionary War. Um, the militia during the Revolutionary War did fight gallantly at times. At other times, they f were absolutely horrible and ran away. Problem with militia is your you're not on a proper contract like like regulars. You're sort of free to come and go as you please. And George Washington had issues with that because, well, they came and went as they pleased. <laughs> Lo and behold. Which meant, you know, one day you have an army of, let's just use an arbitrary number of 2,000, and the next day maybe you have 1,500. And that can be quite problem logistically. That can be problem tactically. Um, so that's where they get their bad rap, is that they, they basically came and went. Uh, Battle of Bunker Hill is a great example of the militia coming and going during the middle of the battlefield. 
they would go to the battle with so many rounds of ammunition because they would provide it for themselves and then they would run out of said ammunition and then they would just leave in the middle of the battlefield because well they they blew their blood literally and they figured well i you know not getting any more ammunition so i might as well leave and that was one of the problems at bunker hill was even though even though the colonials did really really well at bunker hill in the grand scheme of things in terms of uh we'll just call it kill death ratio because i've been playing a lot of war now and that's the terminology they use the british still captured bunker hill and drove the rebels or colonials out whereas if they were properly supplied and they didn't want to uh, go home probably would have held it and the british would have been in a rather large pickle all right um so this is a time where probably need to retreat the frontline troops out of here and by frontline troops i mean the troops that i use on the campaign and make sure that only the scenario troops are being used and have them move forward and let's have you guys move forward and how you can tell the difference is they've got the like brown or red coats i guess we could we could probably do something like that move you forward and just mopping this up so really uh the major difference of this scenario battle is it now matters whereas before it really didn't matter because you were using borrowed units. You still are using borrowed units, but you get to use some of your own units. And it was sort of a tutorial, but not really because it had nothing to do with the core mechanics of the game. Other than your guys shoot, their guys shoot, and you all shoot. But it looks like the militia models... I can't tell... These still kind of look like they're the old militia models, but they're a lot less... Or they have more cohesion than before, whereas the old militia models were really, really bad in terms of cohesion. They, they took up way too much space. Um, so I like that. I wish I... I have, as I said, I haven't played the game in a little while, so hopefully um, maybe this is what the militia looked like just moving forward. Um, but we are just pushing forward here. It's just, uh, can we charge? Charging sometimes works. The British used to be completely overpowered when it came to charging, but now it looks like it works uh, appropriately. So that pretty much is the battle. And one thing I like is you can now zoom out to this mode. Um, it's okay. <laughs> I was actually expecting a little bit, uh, something a little bit better. But um, some really cool changes. I hope to go through all those different changes. And can we end the battle? But the battle's over, right? I remember this being the thing in the first one was, it was like, I, I would like to end, please. I feel like we are done. How are we doing over here? Oh, that's those guys over here. I think we routed them. So we'll just super fast forward and try to shoot their commanders. Um, sh they should be breaking. If you look at the bar, it is a very, very lopsided. There we go. Finish. So that is the Battle of Concord there. Uh, this used to be so different uh, on the outcome because... As I said, it was basically the green tide of orcs. Uh, that would be the American militia against the British regulars. And you were just literally throwing masses of humans at the British and your losses were astronomical. Uh, whereas this, we actually had a, um, a preferential kill to death ratio or uh, casualty and loss ratio there, which is pretty good. I wonder if there are any funny names. I always loved the different names lord elrond all right that is that is a good one there we have lord elrond in the battle 
Um, he obviously got off of his Amazon contract and made it all the way to the Americas. I guess you could call that uh, Vala. Is it Vala? Oh man, I'm going to get roasted in the comments. I can't remember uh, my own Lord of the Rings lore here. We have Dearborn, George Washington, Elias Peen, you know, some good old revolutionary names over here. Ezekiel Eads, he sounds very, very religious over there. The British ones, those are the ones where the, um, the name generator sometimes had some great ones. But I don't see anything outlandish. I'm imagining Lord Elrond is uh, a early backer and his name got in there, so... That is the Battle of Concord, and let's see if it gives you any rewards after I know this is something that they're still working on. There we go, we pushed back the British and preserved our supplies, so 15 reputation points, 1,000 civilian muskets, not the greatest there, and 2,000 gold doubloons. I think at this time they were still shillings or pounds, and then we go back out onto the map and wonder if these guys get to retreat to enemy lines. That would be absolutely horrible if those are... Oh, it wants us to fight another battle that is drastically in favor. Okay, well, I'm going to leave my thoughts of what happened at the end there out of this, but that is the Battle of Concord. A very cool feature that they added into the game. I hope they add more scenario battles and make it to where there aren't forces on the campaign map at the end that are absolutely going to wipe your troops off of the campaign map uh, because you fought a campaign battle. But that is it for today's episode. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of that YouTube jazz. I'm trying to get back into the hang of things and uh, boy it, it, it feels like I'm back at zero subscribers so any comments and like button smashing is much appreciated. As always guys, until next time.